while these guys are feeding on this beautiful sunny morning. I like going up and looking at the, uh, I don't do it every day. That would be a little obsessive, but I love walking up and having a look, see at this new plantation. I'll be planting more trees in here. Uh, the more the merrier with all the diseases and invasive insects and things that are killing a lot of our native trees. I think the more the merrier, the more diverse they are, the better. So I'll probably be, I've got to take this out, by the way. That was there to protect that tree from the sheep and the alpaca. And now with this fence around, it's well protected. So I'll take that out and this alleyway has to remain for when it's frozen. And I need to get water from the aquifer, which is over there, because the mains will freeze. But I want to get as diverse a number of trees around. Because you can see this tree potentially has ash dieback. This one doesn't, is lovely and healthy. That ash, that ash there is lovely and healthy. This horse chestnut is looking fine. The beech there is looking good and the willow. But with all these new diseases coming in, you just don't know. So my idea is to plant trees as many as possible, as thickly as possible, and as diverse a species as possible. And hopefully that will, um, the trees will all help each other out. This is a huge beech tree here. This is the one that has my owl box in it that doesn't have an owl yet. So it's all looking gorgeous. Look at the, um, can you see that? Oh, look at that. A mating dance of a woodland butterfly. Look at that. I don't know if you can see it in the light. So there's still insects doing their thing, particularly those ones. Anyway, let's see how the sheep have done, if they've finished eating yet or not. See, along here, you have the horse chestnut. You have a Scots pine, you have a cherry tree, you have an ash tree, you have a beech tree. So another ash tree. So my grandfather was all about biodiversity. He was way ahead of his time. Just like Rachel Carson. Rachel Carson talks about not having monocultures of trees. And Janie Mack, Silent Spring was written uh, 50, 60 years ago now. I can't remember if it was the late 50s or the 60s that Silent Spring was published. But diversity of trees is a thing. And that's what I'm trying to accomplish. Biodiversity in plant life. So that I have biodiversity of insect life. So I have biodiversity of life. As many species as possible. Hey babies, come on. Come on babies. Yeah, no, no, I mean go babies, go. I don't want you to come. Whoop, Java's doing his thing. Come on ladies, Brindle, leave it. Yeah, you too. Come on, no, you're not, you're not. Hey, Brindle, leave it. Go on. Leave it. Java, Brindle, come back. Java, leave it. There we go. Now, some of them will head straight to the mineral bucket after their feed. And some of them, I don't know if you can see, are gonna go off to the watering trough right after they fed. Hello. How are you, big?
big boy. All the dogs have run off. I know you want to jump on my shoulder now. Oh, Janie. Well, <laughs> cat butt. Are you going to turn around so that I don't have your cat butt in my ear? Come here. Are you going to turn around? I'm not going to turn around. Can you turn around? <laughs> there we go. Good boy. <laughs> So, I'm off today to do a bit of uh, farming with nature consultation with a farmer. Something that I did last year and I'm doing this year. Which is great fun seeing other people's farms and what they've done. And often they're a lot further along than what they think they've been doing. Okay, look at this cat. I mean, honestly. Hey, you. <laughs> Okay, and the dogs are playing. They all the little ones gang up on poor bear. <laughs> And around that corner they go. And I still have the cat on my shoulder. He loves coming for rides. <laughs> He's such a funny cat. Here, I'll drop you off on the bench. Can I get down? There we go. Good boy. Okay, busy day ahead. Looping is because the lane is so narrow, this boreen. It's such a narrow, wonderful boreen. My car's electrics are booping. So tell me about this. 
This is a... So it's a 11th or 12th century Viking boulon. Okay. It's a carved like holy water font. Okay. That the water would be in here. And it goes back, I, we thought it was connected to Dushk Abbey in Great yeah. Manor, but yeah. it actually goes back even, even further more than that. ancient. And it's, I don't know, you can see it's in the wall. Well, uh, this was all rebuilt now. That's not, this is the modern concrete and stuff there. That's modern Plus, concrete. I found that over in a different field. Oh, that was in a different field and you brought it here yeah, to um, preserve it. There's a second one down here if you just want to pause that for Okay, this one is holding water, you say? Oh, look. Oh, wow. It's holding water. That is so cool. That's wonderful. So Viking. Oh, look, there's a carving there, isn't it? There's a carving. Oh, look. I wonder if that's a carving for rain water to get in. No, it's not, but it is a carving. That's an intentional line of some sort. Yeah, it could be. Could be the from the stone masons that carved it. Could. We never found any actual ohm or any other kind of writing on it, but you know, it could have been there one time. And sorry, spell the word again. A B U L L A U N. Uh, I had to so it from Viking time. times. Yeah, but maybe even cool. before that. I'd... Ancient Christian. Yeah, or maybe I don't know. Were Vikings Christian? I don't know. No, what, well, it depends. Like. Some of the Vikings, I suppose, yeah. weren't. The woman from the National Heritage was saying that it was maybe used in their rituals and stuff before. So we don't know. That could have been holding blood. <laughs> <laughs> sacrifice sacrifice some lambs in there or something or somebody's head <laughs>